just to tantalise your taste buds, this is what we're going to be making. If you would like to learn how to build a camper van like this yourself, then please check out my other YouTube videos. So if you guys have found these videos helpful, you can help me out in a big way by picking up a copy of my first ever album that my brother and I recorded in Nashville late last year. Any proceeds will go to future recording projects as well as taking the band on tour and hopefully promoting it. I'll leave a link in the description and talk a little bit more about it at the end of this video. So I want to make a couple of storage boxes next and I'm going to make them in the form of some wooden crates. I'm going to have one that sits in here and one that sits further down our bed frame. I'm going to make this porta potty removable uh, so then I can free that up and put the crate inside instead and use that as more storage space if needed. So what we're going to do is first of all is take a few dimensions. So if you want to make some crates like these, just take your width to begin with. So as is 38.7 centimetres wide, the height I say is 33.1. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that there's three mil of space on these three sides. So for our height, for example, it's 33.1. I'll take away three mil off of there, and that will leave us with 32.8 as our height. Our sides here were 38.7, our width, so we need to subtract two lots of three mil to allow for that to be on both sides, so that's 6 mil in total, which would give us 38.1. I'm going to take the length from the very back, which will be 46.3, so I'm going to have the face of my wooden crate come right up to the leg. So now we've taken measurements for our boxes and subtracted 6 millimetres from the width and 3 millimetres from the height, we need to go ahead and subtract the thickness of our joining pieces of timber. So as you can see, it's got sort of a face, and then you've got these joining pieces here that are basically nailed into the face frame. Okay, so we need to actually subtract the thickness as well of these pieces of timber. So I'm going to be using some 9mm thick pieces. So I'm going to need to subtract 9mm from that side and that side. So I need to subtract that twice, so that would be 1.8 centimeters off the total width. And I'm also going to have to do the same underneath, so I'm going to have to take a further 9mm off our total height as well. So the timber we're using for the face frame of our crates is 20.5mm thick and 94mm wide. You can of course use something that's probably 18mm thick or even a little bit uh, less than that. You could have something that is wider as well. Um, I've butted three pieces up together so that I can make this process a little bit quicker and also ensure that all of our cuts are exactly the same size. So we're going to take the measurements for our width. For this one it's 36.5. Make my mark and then you want to go ahead and make your cuts. So just go ahead and cut as many pieces as you'll need. From working out the height of my crate boxes I need three and a half pieces of these stacked up on each other, so I'm going to cut one in half. Now we've got the face frame pieces cut to size, I just want to check which side of the timber I want facing outwards. So I think this is a particularly interesting side. I'm just going to go through these. See there's more to this side. And decide which way around I want the pieces, so I'm quite happy with that actually as it is. So you could use a biscuit jointer here to make these joins really strong. You could use pocket hole joinery like we have done before, um, but I don't want the pocket holes to be seen and I don't want any filler in there. So I'm just going to simply actually glue these and clamp them together. So again, using our wood glue, we'll be able to clamp these up and then leave it for half an hour and then do the next load. So I'm just going to apply a decent amount of wood glue all across the side, leave it to dry.
don't worry if they are slightly misaligned because we'll take it to the table saw at the very end and just shave off these edges just to make sure that we've got a nice clean even finish. So this is the half piece I was talking about. So I'm going to go tighten all these clamps up as best I can and then we can go ahead and get rid of any of the excess glue. So we've let our glue dry off on this piece here. What I'm going to do is just trim this outer edge here and the same on the other side as we have a few of the boards that kind of don't meet up quite correctly. So I'm literally just going to take a millimetre or two off of here using the table saw. Oh, and there we have it. Got a nice squared off piece now. Uh, so do that to all your pieces. So next up, actually, before we do the sanding, uh, we need to make one of these holes. So you can fit your hands in here and pull on the storage box. So to do that, first of all, we need to make some marks across our panel here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a ruler. I'm going to mark three centimetres down from the top and then I'm going to take the diameter of our router bit. So I've got a circular router bit that is 28 millimetres in diameter. So I'm going to add that on to the 30 millimetres here that I've just marked off. So I've got a total then of 58 millimetres. If you don't have a router that's 28 millimetres in diameter, just find your sort of widest one that you'd be able to you know, fit your fingers through if you were using it to make a cut like this and add that onto your initial mark that you've made from the top. And then you want to make an equal measurement, so I'm placing the ruler sort of in the centre, roughly, between those two marks. And I'm going to come 12 centimetres in from one side and I'll make the same 12 centimetre line in on the other side. So we're going to put a guide on our router so it's going to fit nicely within these two lines, but we obviously need to see where we need to start and where we need to stop. So that's what the purpose of these two are. Because of the way my router is, I won't be able to get the router bit all the way through here in one go. So I'm going to have to turn my board over and do the same technique on this side, which means I will also need to mark this side. My boards here are 20.5 millimetres thick. If you have thinner boards, you will most likely be able to get it through in one go, so you won't need to worry about doing this, and you can just route it on the one side. So this is the router bit I'm going to be using eventually for our cutout. As you can see though, it's got a ball bearing on it, so I won't be able to sink this one through and then gradually make our way through the piece of timber. So I need one that doesn't have a ball bearing on it, which is unfortunately smaller in diameter. So, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that but it's got the blade on the bottom as well, so I'll be able to pass it through. So I've got my guide on here, and I've set it up to be central within those two marks that I've made. So then my ball bearing will be able to fit in between there, and we can then use that router bit to make the cut out. I need this to go all the way through, so we're going to gradually work our way through. Make sure you clamp your workpiece down. So as you can see, I can't get all the way through with my router pushed all the way down. So that's why I'm turning it over. So that's what we've ended up with, this line here. So now what that means is the ball bearing on here will be able to fit within there. And then we can gradually make our way through. You don't want to try and put your router bit all the way through in one pass. You want to do it gradually, otherwise it's going to ruin your router bit and burn the wood. So uh, yeah, we can now move on to this one and make our way through again. Try not to spend too much time in these corners as well because it will burn the wood. Which you can see our insides are pretty similar. I'm just gonna sand around these edges now just to make sure they're all smooth with each other. I'm gonna take a coarse bit of sandpaper. This is 60 grit. 
and I'm just going to work it around these edges. I'm going to place it in like this, and then just... Great, so once you've sanded all of these holes out, we go and sand the entire face frame. So I'm going to start with some 60 or 80 grit sandpaper, something like that, and you want to work your way down uh, to 240 grit sandpaper. I'm just going to bevel off the edges as well when I get to the 240 grit sandpaper. So I'm just going to put the sander a little bit of an angle here, just to smooth those edges off, and also just to take away those really hard edges. So next up then we're going to go ahead and cut our brackets that are going to be running along the sides here. So we're going to have these on both sides and they're also going to be underneath the storage boxes as well. And I'm going to be using some of those tone and groove boards again as the timber to make the brackets out of. It was actually much more cost effective, uh, I think it was about £1.32 for 2.4 metres of this, than getting some that was pretty much the same size timber uh, without the tongue and the groove sections on it for something like 6.75 and being q so I'm going to run this through the table saw and take off the tongue and groove section and then I'll be left with the timber that I need for far less of the price. So what you need to do here is take the dimensions for your length so ours is 46.2 centimeters long so I've gone ahead and clamped five of these boards together and I'm going to cut them to 46.2 centimeters. So for mine, I've decided I'm going to have three on each side, on the other side there, and then four on the bottom. So that will give me a total of 10. So I'm going to go ahead and mark off my first measurement at 46.2. Another good thing again about clamping these together is that they're all going to end up as the same length. Cool, so you can see all of our boards have been cut down. At this point you can decide whether you want to sand it or not. I'm going to go and sand it with some 240 grit sandpaper. Uh, so it is a little coarse on this side on where the cuts have been. I'm just going to bevel the edges slightly as well. Of course, if you didn't sand it, it would probably add to the, uh, the rustic charm. We're going to go ahead and put our joining pieces onto the boxes. So we've turned our face frames upside down so that the handles are on the bottom. Uh, so we're essentially we're doing the bottom of the box crates now. I've cut 10 pieces for this one. I'm going to have four across the bottom and then three along each side. So I'm just going to apply a bead of glue across each side here. This is some of the Gorilla Wood glue again. Place one along there. Going to butt it up. Get a nail. If you've got an actual nail gun, you can go ahead and use this. We're doing this old school. A few taps in kind of hold the uh, board in place and then put it the rest of the way through. And you can go ahead and do the same on, the other, on our other side. So just put one on each side, just hold it in place and go ahead and put another in. I'm just eyeballing where I'm going to put these. I want to get it kind of in the middle of the joining piece of timber. I'm going to put another one in here. So go ahead and do all of your panels on the bottom and then we can move on to the sides. This is what the side's going to look like. Let's quickly show you how the bottom turned out. So there we have it. Now this is where the problems might happen if uh, I've got these bowed pieces of wood that Wix gave me. Wait, so there we have it. There's a little storage box. So I think these look pretty cool. Very usable. And you can make these out of scrap pieces of wood. One thing I'm going to do is just make sure there's no excess glue hanging about anywhere. Right, so next up then I want to add some images to our storage boxes. Got a couple of examples here, so we'll show you how to do that next. Right, so first things first then, we want to find our image. So open up your search engine. Uh, you can put anything you want on these storage boxes, of course, but if you type in something like vintage uh, advertising label or something along those lines, it normally comes up with some pretty cool stuff. And head into images on your search engine, and then you should see a whole host of different images that you could potentially use. So you can just have a little scroll through these. That Hershey's one, that looks pretty cool. So just click on it, right-click it, save image as 
and then just save it somewhere within your documents. Then I'm going to find that image, I'm going to right click it, and if you have Photoshop you can open this with Photoshop. Um, because next we basically need to flip the image, um, because when we print it, if we, if we take it straight from this print and then put it on our storage box, it will actually face the opposite way round. So we need to first flip this image now. So once your image is open, head up to the top here, to image, go on to image rotation, and then go on to flip canvas horizontally, and it will flip it like that. I went ahead and I made mine black and white, you obviously don't need to go and do this, but uh, if you go into adjustments and then head into black and white and then there's different presets here that you can use or you can do your own thing to it then file save as and then we'll save it as the new flipped file so then we also want to change it to a JPEG down here and click save if you don't have Photoshop there is an alternative method so we can do this online actually if you go to a website uh, it's called flipperpicture.com and then you find where you saved your image, so vintage label, and we open it and we want to flip it vertically, um, horiz yeah, <laughs> horizontally and there we go, it's flipped the image for us and then you can just right click and click save image as. So now we've done that we can go ahead and we can print it and what I like to do is I'd like to open up a Word document and put it into there, it's just literally a, uh, a case of, you know, importing the image and then just clicking and dragging it to make it bigger or smaller depending on what you want so say for this one example I've just clicked on it once and of course I can make it smaller or larger depending on what we need for our box okay so then once that's ready go ahead and print it and then we're ready for the next step so to transfer our image from the paper onto the piece of wood we're going to print it using an inkjet printer and then we're going to use some water-based polyurethane, so I'm using this Minwax polyacrylic here uh, to then take that image off of the paper onto our wood. You're going to want to give this a really good stir. And then what we're going to do is take a paintbrush and apply a film of this polyurethane across here where we want our image to sit. And I would apply, not so much that it's puddling, but a fair amount on here. The video I had watched myself on this said that less was more but I actually found the results were better when I put more of this on. Great so there's my image I'm just going to cut that to size quickly. Check you're happy with the position and then lay it flat on top and we're going to push out from the centre flatten it down nice and evenly just make sure there's no air bubbles in there to stop the transfer and we're going to rub that in as best we can and we're going to leave this to dry for at least a couple of hours uh, you could leave this overnight which I might do with this one and then come back to this once it's had time to dry to then take it off okay so we've given our polycrylic plenty of time to dry now I'm going to go ahead with an old toothbrush and just wipe a bead of water across the back. Okay, and then you can try and peel it off by hand at first. And then we can go ahead and use the toothbrush again after that for anything we can't get off. Okay. I'm going to dip the brush back in the water and then just use it to scrape off that remaining paper and it should reveal ok so we can see our image there and then you can rub your hands across here and if there is any excess paper still remaining it will just bring it up as you can see and then we have it so it's kind of come out with a very rustic kind of look to it okay so what you need to do next is give everything a good brush off make sure there's no debris on there anywhere again using our polycrylic 
I'm going to go ahead and give it a protective coat. Give this stuff a good stir and then I'm just going to apply a coat across all three of these boxes and leave it to dry. Okay, once you've finished putting that coat on, just make sure you have a good look around and make sure nothing's puddled anywhere, especially between these sort of cross sections here. Um, and then what you can do is then lay it up on a piece of timber, like I have here. Do have a bit of puddle in there, look. And then there's less contact with the floor then, so all areas can dry off. So we've left the polyurethane finish to dry off for a, a fair few hours now. So I'm going to get a centre punch, which is one of these, and a hammer. I'm just going to do a final check around all of these nail heads to make sure they're seated uh, well within the wood so that they don't scratch our wooden floor. Great, so there we have it, there's our storage boxes. We've got a couple here, let's have a look around. Got our old timer one there. So yeah, this will be a great bit of storage. Thanks for stopping by everybody. Please like and subscribe and check out our other content on all things camper. As I mentioned before, I've just recorded my first album and will need all the help I can get. So I'll leave you with an album preview for now and a link in the description if you'd like to pick up a copy. She does all that she can You put their cold and harsh demeanor It'll soon come